Praise the Lord, everyone. I want to welcome everyone back to our e-service, Facebook Live, uh, at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, where I am the lead pastor, Suffolk and Bishop Frankie L. Quinn, Sr. And we certainly do thank God for our, all of our leadership that are here at Christian Ministries. And we want to certainly thank God for our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn. We thank and praise God for her. And we certainly do praise God for all of our friends and that are connected with Christian ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, truly, God is a great deliverer, and we thank him for all that he's done and his great love and his mercy that he has shown toward all of us. And as I begin to think of even um, this particular time uh, wherein the church is in this season, um, dealing with the coronavirus, COVID-19. Um, I'm thinking that it may have caught the country unprepared, but it didn't catch God unprepared. And when I think about how the Lord has uh, truly uh, blessed us, uh, each and every one of us, um, uh, he's still in control. He's still overseeing. He's still providing. He's still making a way. So we ought to salute God and praise him for his son, Jesus Christ, uh, for whom all of our blessings flow, and to give thanks, truly give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And as we, uh, the scripture says, uh, tells us, oh, give thanks, and we ought to magnify the Lord and lift him up at all times, for his praises shall continually be in our mouth. Remember, beloved, that this is truly still the day that the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, um, modified version of our Sunday message, uh, next week we'll look toward having the praise and worship team uh, with us. Um, I, I had hoped to have them this week, but some things uh, didn't occur um, technically uh, with our our systems, I should say, uh, but hopefully uh, we'll have them with us next week, some way, shape, or form, uh, so we can sing praises unto our God. And I uh, want to go before the Lord in prayer. We just want to remember uh, all those that are grieving and bereaving. Uh, people are losing loved ones, and loved ones are sick. Uh, loved ones are going through. Um, let us remember them as we pray for them, that the Lord will bless them and give them what they need. Let us pray for our doctors uh, that are on the front line and, and their medical staff and all the supply chains so that they will be able to get the necessary resources. Pray for our federal government and our uh, state and local governments that um, they'll work with one accord, uh, be on one accord, and work together uh, for the American people. And let us pray for people all around the world as they are going through what they're going through, uh, uh, the same as we are in this time of need. And truly, Jesus Christ is the panacea uh, for the world. He's the cure and he's the hope for the world. And let us pray for the message, the message, not necessarily just for this hour, but the message that God is sending to his people. Uh, it still is, if my people that were called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. God is still on the throne trying to get our attention. Uh, so let us give him what he desires. I uh, see a lot of my preacher friends, uh, pastors, um, they're calling for fasting, they're calling for prayer. And that's exactly what we need in this hour. A lot of fasting, a lot of prayer, and a lot of seeking the Lord uh, and calling upon him. Um, so let us pray uh, for the message of the hour that the Lord will bless us. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the power that is even in this place and in this house. We ask you, Lord, that you strengthen your servant, grant the door of utterance in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you to bless these, thy great people that are tuning in. 
Send them a word, Lord, of encouragement and strength. Bless them, Lord, as, as we go forward, even unto this day. And Lord, bless us that we may seek you like never before. Put a hunger and a thirst in our heart for righteousness. The scripture says, as the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth our soul after thee, O God. We ask you, Lord, that you bless your servant. Bless me with the door of utterance in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And we certainly do <clears throat> uh, am excited about the word of the Lord um, that he has for us even on this day. And I just want to put out an announcement um, for those that are members of Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, you still are able to uh, mail in your tithes and your offerings uh, to 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. And let us uh, realize and understand that ministry still goes on. The bills still need to be paid. And we want to uh, encourage you uh, with your tithes and your offerings uh, to give unto the Lord. And as we <clears throat> begin to uh, move forward into our lesson on today, I certainly do thank God for our Sunday school lesson um, that we had um, just a half hour ago, and I praise God for it, and um, certainly am encouraged and strengthened by all of you that have tuned in, and uh, some of you are going for another round. <laughs> Amen, and that's good. Every round goes higher and higher in the Lord. Um, so I want you to uh, turn with me uh, to the book of Colossians, for the book of Colossians. Amen. And dealing with the church uh, at Colossae, uh, the church at Colossae. Um, and I just want to read in your hearing uh, a particular verse, a particular verse of scripture. Uh, drop me down to uh, verse, my focused verse is verse 23. But I want to read, read to you uh, Colossians chapter number one, starting at verse 22. It says, in the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. And verse 23 is our focused verse. It says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature under heaven, whereof I, Paul, and made a minister. I just want to read that in your hearing one more time. Uh, verse 23, Colossians 1 and 23 says, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature under, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. And I just want to take a thought uh, from basically... Uh, those the, the part A of that particular verse. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. And I just want to take a thought, really, uh, from that particular verse. And my subject today will be, I shall not be moved. Can you say that with me? I shall not be be moved. I shall not be moved. In other words, be steadfast. I shall not be moved. Um, what I love about the book of Colossians is it really declares Jesus Christ uh, to be the head of the church. And um, he's the head of the church whose body we are. And you know that Peter was asked a question. We say Peter because 
he's the one that answered the question, but Jesus was really uh, talking to all of his disciples. He said, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And a lot of discussion was made about that. Some said that thou art a prophet. Some said you're not Elias and Moses and, and so forth and so on. But then Jesus turned the question to them. He says, to who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? And then Peter uh, spoke up as the spokesman and said that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus turned to him and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then you know the story. Jesus changed his name uh, and called him the Rock. And then Jesus says, Upon this rock I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then Jesus went on to attach some, some, every kingdom has to have power and authority. So Jesus attached it and said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, gave him the keys to the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose, it shall be loosed in heaven. So the kingdom comes with power, it comes with authority. And uh, what Jesus was saying, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church he was talking about us, uh, the ecclesia, which is which really the word means. It means those that are called out, called out from where, called out from the world, and and through the blood of Jesus and His sacrifice, have literally been translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. So Jesus is the Christ. He's the head of the church. The church. He's the head of the church. And in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 27, it says, Now are ye the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ and members in particular, uh, which means members in particular, which means which uh, you have your own special purpose and function. In other words, like my, my hand has a special purpose and function, my legs have a, a special purpose and function. My eyes have a purpose and a function that's special. You being in the body of Christ, you yourselves have a very special purpose and function. And how do you get into the body, you may say? Well, you believe on Jesus. You believe on Jesus as the Christ, that he died for you, he died for your sins, and that you repent and you want to change your lifestyle. And once you do that, you are saved. The Bible says you are saved by grace and that through faith. And then you, mo, uh, you must also get baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And then you also must receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So all of that goes together. Faith in Christ, baptism in the name of Jesus, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Uh, if you want to do more in-depth study on, on what I'm telling you, um, you want to go to the, where the church age begins. And the church age begins in the book of Acts. It's in the book of Acts. Acts tells you how the church begins and, um, and how the church age starts. And Jesus starts out telling them that he wanted them to go to Jerusalem and to you be endowed with power from on high. Amen. And he told them to tarry there. And then once you receive the Holy Ghost, you can be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. Even Paul, uh, the great apostle Paul, if you read his story in the book of Acts chapter 9, you'll see wherein he himself uh, had saw Jesus, called him Lord, submitted to his authority, um, and was baptized of the brethren, and he also received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then when you go to uh, uh, Acts chapter number 10, the very next chapter, you'll see where Cornelius, thank you, Lord, he also uh, uh, heard the gospel, him and his household, they heard the gospel preached unto them, they were baptized, 
Yeah, uh, they, the Holy Ghost fell on them first, and then they were baptized in the name of Jesus. So you got to believe in Jesus, get baptized in the name of Jesus, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost actually translates you into the kingdom of God. Amen. So we being, I'm saying all of that because I want us to focus on the fact that we are members of him in particular, born, uh, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And being a part of uh, the body, being a part of his body, we have access to his power. We have access to the power and authority and the inheritance that is in Jesus Christ. Literally, we have access to his power, the power that Jesus has he translates and transcends that power unto us. And we have authority. Uh, the scripture in the book of Galatians tells us that we're actually seated with Christ Jesus, seated in a position or a, uh, a, a, a position of power and authority. And then, as you know, we have access then also to his inheritance, his inheritance, whatever Jesus is going to inherit whatever Jesus has that also belongs. He's going to share that with us. The scripture says, uh, then it talks about uh, we also are partakers of his glory. We are partakers of the glory that is in Jesus Christ. And I want to say this, that uh, when Jesus died, when he actually gave of his life. The Bible says that he ascended up on high and he led captivity captive. Everything that could hold you captive or everything that could hold you bound, he, he, he captivated it, amen? And he, he took control over it. He gained the victory over it, everything, everything. Every plot of the enemy, uh, both spiritual, physical, and natural, Jesus gained the victory over it. And then the scripture says that he gave good gifts unto us. He gave good gifts unto the body of Christ. He gave gifts unto us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then uh, part of those gifts were the fivefold ministry. And those fivefold ministries, they work uh, for us. Amen. To perfect us. He gave some pastors and apostles, some, some teachers, some prophets. Amen. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification or the building up of the body of Christ. So I'm, I'm saying that, uh, beloved, because we are uh, accepted in him. And because we are literally accepted in him, um, we have uh, uh, power. We have authority. So though we are unable to to assemble ourselves together, you know, um, uh, together collectively at our church buildings. We must not lose sight of the fact that we are a part of a living organism, that we are a part of the body of Christ, one that is not made with hands, amen, none that is not made with brick and mortar, thank you, Lord, so to speak, but but, but one that is made through the spirit, through the power of the living God. And it's the Holy Ghost that translates us into the body. So we're, we uh, are, 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 are being in his body, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. We have greater access, amen, than what you or some people would choose to believe. Though we are not physically all together, don't get me wrong. We need to come together. The Bible says, uh, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But, but in these times, uh, due to the restrictions, we are unable to come together and worship as we ought or as we would desire. But never lose the sight of the fact that, uh, that you are a part of a greater body, which relates to the body of Christ. Amen, that you are members of his in particular. So brothers, don't cast away. Sisters, don't cast away your confidence, which have great recompense or reward. Amen, we need have need of patience, the Bible says, 
that after we have done the will of God, we might receive the promise. So patiently in wait, patiently endure, amen, until we come out on the other side. And as I was telling uh, individuals earlier today that, that though we are apart, though that we are not going through our normal norm, we should still be uh, uh, elevated and connected and pursuing after Jesus because we are a part of his body. We should literally be, be continuing to build ourselves up. Amen. Now that we have an opportunity and our, our regular schedules have been uh, canceled, so to speak, we should be spending more time in the word of God. We should be spending more time fasting and praying and seeking after the Lord so that we can build ourselves up. Because I believe, brothers and sisters, when we come out of this, we have to come out stronger. We have to come out with a mindset that, Lord, hallelujah, you brought me through this. I know you'll bring me out through anything else on the other side. And the enemy would like to try to confuse our hearts and our minds and to make us think that we're isolated, that we're all alone. But you're not alone. Amen. Jesus said in his word that he'll never leave you. He said he'll never forsake you. He said he'll always be with you, always until the end of the world. Amen. So that, that brings me, I'm saying all of that to bring you to this particular scripture. Amen. We understand that, that Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice, he literally made peace for you and I. Amen. Through his blood, the blood of the cross. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But through Jesus Christ and through his body or through his blood, he has literally what the scripture says, reconciled all things unto himself, both things that are in heaven and things that are in earth. Amen. Um, what Adam and Eve did to us, <laughs> what they did to us uh, in the garden, in the garden of Eden, amen, sin was passed on through their disobedience because they hearkened or they listened to uh, the serpent that beguiled them. The uh, Bible says that Adam was not deceived, amen, he willingly gave in because he wanted to be with his wife. So therefore, the scripture says that sin was passed on, that sinful nature, Amen. Those sinful habits, those sinful desires were passed on to you and I. In other words, as Bishop Noel Jones often says, and I like that word proclivity. Amen. We have a proclivity or it's in our nature left up to ourselves, our human nature uh, to want to do evil. Amen. To want to commit sin. We have uh, in our human nature a desire. Amen. To want to commit sin. But that's why uh, Jesus affords us his divine nature. Amen. Hallelujah. And, it by, and the scripture tells us in Peter uh, that we can have the divine nature, <clears throat> having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. And that's what Jesus offers unto us. Thank you, Lord. And that's very powerful as we begin to move through the scriptures here, because I want to hit on uh, a lot of things, and I want to talk to you about uh, we shall not be, I shall not be moved, and why that is a very profound statement. Thank you, Lord. So, so what Christ has done for us, amen, he has reconciled us, literally through the blood of the cross, and, and through his blood, and through faith in his blood, Thank you, Lord. We have become children of God. At one time, the scripture says that we were aliens or alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, but have made, been made nigh or been drawn close by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. So no longer are, are we strangers and foreigners, but we are children adopted in the royal family. And that's why it's important Hallelujah to receive the Holy Ghost because once you receive it, you literally cry out, Abba, Father, declaring God to be your Father uh, in the name of Jesus. So 
having said that, uh, the mission and the goal and the purpose of Jesus is, as the scripture says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And notice, to present you faultless, amen, before his presence with exceeding joy, amen. And that's what Jesus, uh, hallelujah, that's what he wants to do uh, for you and I. He wants us to literally to overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And the only way to do that, my friend, you have to have the power of the Holy Ghost operating in you, and you have to be obedient to the Word of God. You have to be obedient to the Word of God. The Scripture says that there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Notice, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Hallelujah. You've got to walk after the spirit. You've got to walk after the anointing. You've got to walk after the power that is in Christ Jesus. In fact, you've got to develop a hunger and a thirst. Hallelujah for righteousness. I love the scripture when it says in the book of Psalms, as the deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Hallelujah. Are you hungry and are you thirsty for Jesus? Are you hungry and thirsty for the master? Hallelujah. Remember uh, Mary and Martha uh, when Jesus went to visit them at their house? Thank you, Lord. And Martha got upset because Jesus uh, was there teaching and Mary wanted to join the Bible class and she went and tried to rebuke uh, Mary through Jesus and said that Jesus, you know, uh, she not helping me. And my, Jesus turned to Martha and said, Martha, Martha, you're, com you're coming about many things, but Mary has desired that better part. Uh, hallelujah. Are you desiring that better part? Do you want to sit at the feet of Jesus? That's why the scripture talks about being born again. Being born again of the water and of the spirit. And when you're born again, you got a new appetite. Hallelujah. Uh, you got a new desire. You want, you want holiness. You want, you want righteousness. You want the things that be of God. You literally want to uh, shun this present world and you want to literally get into the things that be of God. Hallelujah, my God. I see why the scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that's why Paul said, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Hallelujah, that you do what? Present your body. Tell your neighbor to present your body. That you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now notice what it says. He says, be not conformed, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. The only way your mind can be renewed is through constant study of the word of God. Through constant study and application of the word of God. You have to become a student of the word and apply that word to your life. And then when you begin to apply that word to your life, you let go of, of things that are evil. Things that are wicked in the name of Jesus. Uh, so he said, be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now notice, that you might prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. That's what we ought to be doing. That's what we ought to be seeking after and going after the perfect will of God. That's why Jesus died on the cross for you, gave of his life for you so that, so that you'll be able, hallelujah, to go after the perfect will so that he then in the end is able to present you uh, unto the Father Faultless, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. So that brings us then uh, to our lesson. Hallelujah, I'm getting excited. Thank you, Jesus. He said, the Lord wants to literally present you holy. And that word present you holy means to present you without sin. And let me say this, because what I'm about to say, um, a lot of people uh, uh, won't, uh, be able to grasp it or won't be able to receive it 
uh, but you have to grasp it and receive it through the spiritual mind because the natural things uh, can't be understood by the spirit. Amen. So you've got to understand the, the, the spiritual things by and through the spirit. So I want to talk to your spiritual mind today. Thank you, Lord. The fact that Jesus died. Why did he die? He died on the cross for our sins, for our transgressions. In other words, Jesus on that cross was a transgression offering. Amen. A, a sin, as the Old Testament would say it, a, a, a trespassing sin. Amen. We all trespassed against God when we violated his commandments. So Jesus died on that cross and reconciled us to get us into back into a right relationship with God so that we can be sinless. And the definition for sinless means holy. Amen. Hallelujah. We, he wants us to be holy. He wants us to be sinless. Now, how can we be sinless? That's why the scripture says uh, that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And what we must do when we receive Christ, we receive forgiveness of our sins, but now we have to walk according to God's commandments. What is God's commandments? His 10 commandments, amen? Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make any graven images. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt honor or keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day represents a day of rest, resting nowadays from your old sinful habits. Then he says that honor thy mother and thy father. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not bear false witness and thou shalt not covet. If you do these and honor your God. Jesus put it this way. He said, what is the first and the second greatest commandment? He was asked to honor, uh, uh, love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. The first uh, uh, four commandments deal with your relationship with God, how to love him. The, the last six commandments deal with your relationship, how to love your brother and your sister. Now, if we don't break these 10 commandments, then we can be holy. Amen. Hallelujah. We can be holy in the sight of God. So what Jesus was saying, hallelujah, I want, to, I want you to understand what I'm saying here. Jesus wants to present you holy and the scripture says, and unblameable. Thank you, Lord. And unblameable, holy and without sin. He wants you to live a lifestyle, hallelujah, that is sin free. And a lot of people don't believe that you can live a lifestyle, hallelujah, free from sin. But I want to challenge you today because if you read the scriptures, especially the New Testament scriptures, it tells you to be blameless without offense. It tells you to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you. And, and Jesus, if we, if we don't believe that we can do that, then we diminish the sacrifice of Christ. The scripture says, uh, uh, thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you don't believe that you can live a, 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 a life in a power and authority, amen, then you need to stop quoting that scripture, amen. But if you do believe it, hallelujah, and you manifest it all in your life, God will give you the revelation. God will give you what you need, amen, to become a full-fledged believer, holy, without blame, before God in love. And notice what he says, thank you, Lord, uh, to present you, unblameable, and the scripture says unreprovable. And that word unreprovable literally means without blame. Amen? Without blame. No man can blame you. Uh, the devil can't blame you. The devil can't accuse you, hallelujah, of evil if you walk in the spirit uh, and not in the flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. So we see here then, I said all that to say this, is that Jesus 
Jesus himself, he's looking forward. He's looking forward to the day when he, the Redeemer, uh, can present the redeemed, which is us. Thank you, Lord. And uh, before the Father without sin. In other words, Jesus is looking for forward to the day when the Redeemer and the redeemed can stand together before the Father without sin. In other words, uh, he's looking forward to the day when he's able to present the body, amen, the body of Christ, hallelujah, his bride to the Father, thank you, Lord, and, and then uh, after that, God will accept us and he will be all in all. So Jesus is looking forward to that day and we should be looking forward to that day. And, and we can be a partaker of that day, as the scripture says, uh, if we be continue in faith, rooted and grounded and settled. And this is where I want to talk to you today, my friends. Hallelujah, that, that though we may seem to be apart one from another, though, though we seem to uh, not have the connections that we normally would have, you've got to remember that you are connected to the body of Christ. Amen. You are connected to something that's powerful, that has redemptive quality, that, that is everlasting, that, that, that you can call on him and he'll be nigh thee even in thy mouth. You're connected to someone that he said he'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You're connected to someone when you call on him. He said that I'll give you my peace. Hallelujah. Not the peace that the world gives you, but I'll give you a peace. Hallelujah. Jesus says this. I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. So, so that's why in this day and age, thank you, Lord. That, that though, though the world is upside down and though the world is going through what it's going through, you can be encouraged. Hallelujah. You can be steadfast. Hallelujah. You should be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's why we got to continue. Hey, glory. We got to continue in him. Thank you, Lord. Being steadfast, being unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And he says, that's why he says, if you continue in the faith, hallelujah, in the faith that is in Jesus Christ. That reminds me of what Paul said. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Hallelujah. He was determined and he said in the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God who died for me and gave his life for me. And that's what you've got to do, my friend. You've got to live this life by the faith. Hallelujah. That is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I see why Paul said I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I've kept the faith. That has to be our testimony. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me. Hallelujah. A crown of righteousness. Which the Lord shall give me at that day. And not only to me he said. But to all those that are expecting to be in his appearance. All those that are loving to be in his appearance. Hallelujah. So, so you've got to hallelujah have faith. And then you've got to be grounded. Amen. Grounded where? Grounded in the word of God. Hallelujah. The enemy and people want to tell you this. They want to tell you that. Hallelujah. But you've got to know the word for yourself. And this time God has caused us to have a sit down. God has caused things to be shut down. God has caused things to be closed so that you can focus on the word of God, so that you can study his word, so that you can hide that word in his heart, in your heart, so that you won't sin against him. My friend, there's no excuse. Hallelujah. Why we shouldn't be in the word, why we shouldn't be studying the word, why we shouldn't be praying and seeking God like never before. 
Hallelujah. And God wants you to be grounded. He wants you to be settled. Hallelujah. Settled in your own mind. Not by every wind of doctrine and every false teaching that makes us world, this world topsy-turvy. But he wants you to be sober-minded. Hallelujah. Thinking soberly according to the scriptures. You know, I'm excited. I tell you. Thank you, Lord. Uh, though this coronavirus is going on and, and people are dying left and right, I know that this is not the end. Hallelujah, because the word says that this is not how it's going to end. The world is not going to end like this. Hallelujah, that keeps me rooted. That keeps me uh, grounded. I know that the blood of Jesus, it covers me. Hallelujah, that keeps me rooted. That keeps me grounded. I know that I can pray to him. Hallelujah, that I got access to the throne of God 24-7. That keeps me rooted. That keeps me grounded. That keeps me settled. I know that I have power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, when I received it from the Holy Ghost. That keeps me rooted. That keeps me grounded. That keeps me settled. I know that no temptation. Hallelujah, that comes unto us. Thank you, Lord. And, and God has already made a way of escape. That keeps me rooted. That keeps me grounded. That keeps me settled. Hallelujah. And knowing all this, my soul says, I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Did your soul say that today? That you shall not be moved? Hallelujah. You shall not be tossed by every wind of doctrine, by every word, by every news report. But you should stand fast. Hallelujah. Trusting in the Lord. Do you believe him today? You ought to clap your hands and give God a praise. You ought to magnify him in this atmosphere because he's worthy. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. My Lord, and while you're being rooted and grounded because Jesus has an expectation for you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, be not moved away. Amen. From the hope that is in the gospel. The gospel represents the good news of Jesus Christ. The gospel represents the power that, that is in the message that is transformed, that transforms us in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul said, shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Shoes are meant for a foundation for the body on which to stand. The gospel that we preached unto you, hallelujah, is power. Thank you, Lord. It's a certified gospel wherein you can stand. Hallelujah. Stand. Hallelujah. Having your loins girt about with truth. Hallelujah. Stand. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah. Stand. Having on the helmet of salvation. Stand with the shield of faith. Hallelujah, so you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Stand having the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, so that you'll be able to combat that. Hallelujah, what the enemy wants to throw your way. You've got to be able to stand. Hallelujah, in this day and time, my God, don't cast away your confidence, which have great recompense and reward. You believe in the beginning, believe in the middle, and believe in the end. That he that shall come, he will come, and he will not tarry. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah, with all your heart. Oh, my God. Hallelujah, trust him. Hallelujah, with all your heart. And do good. My God, do good. And the Bible says, and verily shalt thou dwell in the land. So the scripture says, thank you, Lord. You've got to believe that word which was preached. And don't but be moved away. Don't be moved away from the hope that is in the gospel. And that word hope means the confidence. Hallelujah. He that began a good work in you, he shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I'm confident of that. I'm confident of the fact that, hallelujah, that, 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 that he that shall come, he will come and he will not tarry. I'm confident of that. Hallelujah. I'm confident in the fact 
that he's able to keep me from falling, to present me faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. I'm confident of that, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, that every hallelujah tongue that rises up against us, hallelujah, God is going to condemn it. I'm confident of that. Hallelujah, I'm confident that he's able. Hallelujah, do you, is he able today? Hallelujah, are you confident of that? My God, don't cast away that confidence. Hallelujah, that, that was placed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news, uh, Isaiah said, who have believed our report? Hallelujah, to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? Do you believe the report today? Hallelujah, I believe. My God, just declare it in this atmosphere. Just tell somebody that you believe. That I believe that Kalabosha. I believe in the anointing. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the word of God. Just tell somebody, hallelujah, that you believe. Hallelujah, that you're trusting in him. That you're resting in him. My God, my God, because Jesus has a purpose Hallelujah, that we should not be moved. Hallelujah, don't be moved. Hallelujah, by every wind of doctrine. Don't be moved by every sound under heaven. My God, don't be moved by every uh, uh, media report that you hear. My God, don't be moved by the sounds and the whispers of the enemy in the midnight hour. Hallelujah, know that your God is able to keep you from falling. Know that your God is able to establish you. We weren't established, hallelujah, on a false doctrine. We were established, hallelujah, on the foundation of Jesus Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. You ought to give your God a praise. You ought to give your God a praise. You ought to magnify him. Hey, in this atmosphere on today. Oh, my God, my God, I got one more point. My Lord, to bring out that kind of Oshata. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to let you go. Hallelujah. As we look at the scriptures, as we look at the word on today, hallelujah, we can think that kind of Oshata. Hallelujah. About the power that is in Jesus Christ. And as we look at the word on today, the Bible says, number one, that we should continue in the faith. Then he says, don't be moved away from the hope of the gospel. Then Paul said, which was preached, hallelujah, to every creature under heaven. And I want to say this to you, brothers and sisters, my God in heaven, that, that remember your training. Hallelujah, you've been exposed to this word. Hallelujah, you've been taught the word now through this, these, these years. Hallelujah, even if you are a new Christian or a new saint, Hallelujah. You can go into the word of God. Hallelujah. And, and, and uh, hide that word in your heart. But my point is, 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 is don't lose the hope on the fact that what you've been taught. Hallelujah. Don't be moved away. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for false teaching, for false reports. Thank you, Lord. Be, be established in the faith. In other words, Thank you, Lord. Don't forget, don't forget that he's still Alpha and Omega, that he's the beginning and the end. Don't forget that he's able to do exceeding. Don't forget he's the author and the finisher of your faith. Don't forget that he will keep you in the midnight hour. Don't forget that he is a hiding place, a shelter in a time of the storm. Don't forget that the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. He can make you lie down in the green pastures. He can lead you beside the still waters. Don't forget that though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Hallelujah. He won't leave you. You don't have to fear because his rod and his staff, they're there to comfort you. Don't forget, he'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies and your cup shall run over. Don't forget that his goodness and his mercy, that kind of shot, hallelujah, will be with you forever. Don't forget, hallelujah, don't forget to praise him. 
hallelujah, in the midnight hour. Don't forget, hallelujah, that he dwells in the midst of praise. Hallelujah, that he dwells in the midst of praise. Don't forget, hallelujah, what you have been taught. Hallelujah, how to live holy. Don't forget that you've been taught how to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't forget that you've been taught how to fast and how to consecrate yourself. Hallelujah, so that you can hear from heaven. Hallelujah, so that you can enter in his gates with thanksgiving. So that you can enter in his courts with praise. Don't forget that how to put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy snatch away this word. Hallelujah. Don't forget. Hallelujah. That he's able to give you what you need. And that he's already provided it in the name of Jesus. Don't forget that you must walk by faith. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Not by sight. Hallelujah. It's not about what I see. It's about what I believe in this word. Hallelujah. It's not about, my God, what man knows. It's about what he knows. And he knows and he holds the future. Hallelujah. It's not about what I think. It's not about what you think. Hallelujah. It's about what the Lord thinks. Hallelujah. It's about what the Lord knows. My God, don't forget. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. That, that God is your keeper. That God is your way maker. That God is your strength and your shield in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. So in the face of corona, you ought to praise him. In the face of danger, you ought to praise him. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. Those of you that have lost your jobs, you ought to praise him. Those who bank accounts may be seeming to get low, you ought to praise him. Those that are affected by corona, you ought to praise him. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In everything, give thanks. Oh, God, in everything, give him praise. In everything, magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy to be praised. Hey, glory. Hallelujah, my friend. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, the word is, don't be moved. Amen. Hallelujah, because Jesus wants to present us faultless. Hallelujah, Jesus is looking, hallelujah, to present his church, a glorious church, without spot, without blemish, hallelujah, without wrinkle. Hallelujah, but he doesn't want us to forget. He wants us to continue, continue in his word, Continue trusting in him. Uh, continue to building our hope on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I heard somebody say, what do you have to lose? <laughs> hey, hallelujah. You need to try Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You got everything to gain. Hallelujah. You got everything to gain if you just try Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can gain your health. You can gain your right mind. You can gain your strength. You can gain your purpose. You can gain your desire. You can gain your hope. Hallelujah. If you just try Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Just try him. Oh, just put your trust in him. Ah, my friend. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord has laid it on my heart. Hey, glory. That if anybody wants to be baptized in the name of Jesus... Hallelujah, just inbox me, just message me. Hallelujah, and I'll baptize you in the name of Jesus. We got clothes for you to change into. Hey, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, we got water to baptize you in. Hallelujah, even in this day. Hallelujah, the Lord is still saving. In this day, the Lord is still adding to the church. Hey, hallelujah, such as should be saved. Thank you, Lord. My God in heaven, just inbox me. Just message me. Hallelujah. Any way possible. Hallelujah. Just let me know. Hallelujah. I'll make sure you get baptized in his name. Thank you, Lord. I'll lay hands on you. Thank you, Lord. And pray that the Lord will fill you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Don't fall back. Hey, hallelujah. Don't turn back. 
Hallelujah. Just keep pressing ahead. Don't be moved uh, by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear. Trust in the Lord. Be well grounded. Be steadfast. Don't be shifted away from the hope that is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And remember what you've been taught. My God, remember the word of God that is equated in your life. So we ought to take this time. Thank you, Jesus. When the world is slowed down, my God, we should take this time to really give our hearts to the Lord. I don't know how long this is going to be, but I'm imagining that it may be another two weeks before we ever before we're able to come together. Thank you, Lord. Maybe greater. I don't know. Thank you, Lord. But one thing I do know, that in this time, we should be literally building ourselves up. In this time, we should be seeking the Lord like never before. In this time, we should be laying aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us because Jesus is soon to come. Let's be sober, my friend. Hallelujah. Let us not forget uh, that the Lord himself, he's going to descend from heaven with a shout. The voice of the archangel, and at the last trump, the dead in Christ, they're going to rise up first. And then we that are alive and remain, we shall be caught up. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Caught up to meet the Lord in the air. But you got to continue in this thing. Hallelujah. You got to watch as well as pray. You got to build yourself up. Hallelujah. As you trust in the Lord. So I want to say this to my Christian ministry family. And those that are supporters of Christian ministries. Don't cast away your confidence. Which has great recompense and reward. Ah, for you have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, then you'll receive the promise. The promise that are written in his holy writ. Hallelujah. The promises of God are sure. The promises of God are amen. I want to encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. To lay aside all weights. To lay aside all sin. And look unto Jesus. Who's the author and the finisher of your faith. I want to encourage you. If you need to get it right. Get it right. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you. If you need to get saved. Get saved. Hallelujah. Because we are living truly in the last days. Perilous times have come. Ah, But as we see the day approaching. We get excited. We look up because our redemption draws nigh. All right, my friend, clap your hands and give God a praise. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I feel renewed strength. Anybody that knows me know I'm, trying, I'm getting my second win now. I can preach another hour. <laughs> hey, glory. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. But we want to thank God for you. Amen. And we also want to encourage uh, those that are members of Christian ministries uh, and those that are friends of Christian ministries, uh, send in your tithes and your offerings. Just mail them into uh, Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16501. Amen. Some people may say, well, the church is closed. Uh, uh, why do they need tithes and offering? Amen. Well, the church is not closed. Amen. Still got bills to pay. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And, and God wants to continue to see you do the right thing. So let us pray for one another. Oh, my God. That's right. Let us pray for one another as we begin to move uh, from this hour to the next. Amen. I'm so glad that you tuned in. Amen. I'm so glad that you uh, are a part of this great ministry and hearing this great word that comes from the Lord. Continue. Don't be moved 
Amen. About what you hear and about what is being said. Don't be turned away. Amen. Such a timely message. Such a needed message in this hour. So let us pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for everyone that has tuned in on today. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless them right now. Bless them in their spirit, their soul, and their body. Grant them what they need for strength, healing, and deliverance. Let this word penetrate the heart. Hallelujah. Let it not be moved away from the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Let it be hid in the heart that the enemy cannot find, that the enemy cannot steal. Father, we thank you. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray for glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to say that I want you to tune in again with me on this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock for our Bible study. This we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen and amen.